Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to go over Battle of the Sexes. And the story is as follows. A man and a woman want to get together for an evening of entertainment, but they have no means of communication. They can either go to the ballet or go to the fight for this night of entertainment. And the man prefers going to the fight, while the woman prefers going to the ballet. But they have this interesting facet here. They both prefer being together than being alone. And in fact, they value each other's company so much that if they end up at opposite forms of entertainment, they'll just both have to go home completely dissatisfied. Now, this game goes by a bunch of other names because, for some reason, the story is perceived by some to be sexist in some way. I don't really buy into that. Your mileage may vary, but nevertheless, we're going to stick to this story because it is the most common version of this game. And after all, if you really do believe that it is sexist, you can just believe that the woman wants to go to the fight and the man wants to go to the ballet and just flip-flop everything I say from here on in, and that might resolve your issues. So regardless of that one little caveat, we can condense this information into this matrix you see here. So player one is going to be the man, player two is going to be the woman, just like we've always done with player one being a he and player two being a she. And we see that if they end up in opposite forms of entertainment, so here the man is at the fight, the woman is at the ballet, and here it's vice versa, uh, they both end up with zero points of utility because they're so dissatisfied and they have to go home. Now, meanwhile, here when they're both at the ballet, the man is happy, he gets one point because they're together, and the woman is really happy because they're together and they're at her most preferred form of entertainment. And down here, we see that both of them are happy because, well, the woman is happy because they're both together, but the man is really happy because they are together at his most preferred form of entertainment. So now we go about solving this game in the same way we've done before. We first look for pure strategy Nash equilibria, and it shouldn't take much convincing for you to believe that there are two pure strategy Nash equilibria for ballet, ballet, and fight, fight. So the reason for this, of course, is that if both of them are at the ballet, if either one of them goes to the fight instead, that's going to be strictly worse. They're going to go and from a positive payoff up here for the man, it's going to be one. If he deviates to the fight, he goes to zero. That's bad for him. And likewise, if the woman deviates from ballet and goes to the fight, she goes from two to zero, which is bad for her. So that's going to be a pure strategy Nash equilibria. And the same is true for here. If they're both at the fight, if the man goes to the ballet, he goes from two to zero. And if the woman goes from the fight to ballet, she goes from one to zero. So this has to be a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Sorry, a pure strategy Nash equilibrium as well. Now, I misspoke just there. I said that this is a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. This, of course, isn't, but the reason that I accidentally said that is because there is, in fact, a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium to this game, and so we should go about solving it in the same way that we've done before. We're going to solve for player one's mixed strategy here, and we do that by asking ourselves, what is the utility for player two for just always going to the ballet? And we know that it's going to be a function of some mixed strategy of player one represented by the sigma, which is the probability that he goes to the ballet. So some percent percentage of the time, this sigma right here, player two will get two points. And then the rest of the time, which is one minus that sigma, so this is the probability that player one goes to the fight instead, well, she'll get zero points for that outcome. So player one's going to the fight, player two is always playing ballet, so that represents that zero. That's how you get to there. So that gives us one of these equations, and now we do it for if player two always went to the fight instead. So we ask ourselves, what is the utility for player two for always going to the fight? And we know that's a function of the same mixed strategy of player one's, which is the sigma, which represents, again, the probability that he goes to the ballet. And so now we know that some percentage of the time, the sigma uh, she'll get zero points, and then the rest of the time, one minus the sigma, she'll get one point. And we know that for this to be a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, these two things need to be equal to each other. So we have these two equations from these last two slides, and because these two things equal each other, we can set those two equations equal to each other as well. And then through some algebraic manipulation, we solve for sigma, and we see that, well, the probability that player one will go to the ballet is one third, and, well, it's very simple to calculate the probability that goes to the fight as well, because that's just one minus that probability, so that's going to be two-thirds. Now, it also shouldn't take much convincing for you to understand that it's going to be the opposite for player two. So player two is going to go to the ballet two-thirds of the time, and she's going to go to the fight one-third of the time, and that will be a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Now, what makes Battle of the Sexes interesting is, in fact, this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. It's what we would like to call inefficient and Pareto inefficient. So there's actually going to be some 
uh, equilibria that are improving for both players than this mixed strategy Nash equilibria. But to verify this, we're going to have to be able to calculate expected utilities based off of mixed strategies, which is something I haven't taught you yet. And it's also not the subject of this video. It's going to be the subject of the next video. So in the next video, we will learn how to calculate mixed strategy Nash equilibria, or rather expected utility of mixed strategy Nash equilibria. And we'll also review that in context of this game and see why this mixed strategy Nash equilibrium is actually uh, an inefficient outcome that really doesn't make too much sense. So join me then.